Hello, my name is Casey Quisenberry, and today I'm going to show you how to organize your content browser inside Unreal Engine 5. Now, a few important disclaimers before we get into it. Obviously, there's no correct way to do this, organize a content browser in a thousand different ways. This is just the way that I personally like to do it and the way that I found is effective for me. Think of this more as a, a jumping off point for you when you're organizing your project. The second thing is that, you know, depending on the project, organization can be very different. So if you have a project that's vastly different than, you know, projects I've worked on, you might need a different system or if you just have, you know, some sort of strange or different project, you might need, a, you know, a different system than this one. And the third is that a, a lot of how you organize your project is dependent on the size of the project. So I'm going to be organizing this for, you know, smaller projects. But say if you're doing like some giant game, you know, this probably doesn't make much sense uh, to organize it the way I'm doing it. So this is a third person template project uh, with starter content. So that's also an important thing. If you don't have starter content engaged, you can skip over this section, but I'm just going to explain right here. So of course we have our content section. Everything in here is pretty organized. You don't really need to mess with that too much. Now I'm just going to leave everything in here. I usually like to delete a couple different things in the starter content, but I'm just going to go ahead and leave it for this video. But I typically like to delete these three because you don't really need them uh, when you're prototyping or white boxing. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just leave them. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this level prototyping into here. So that's basically a, a content starter thing. Now you might notice it didn't delete the folder. The folder is still here, but we can fix that. Uh, so this is also just like a tip for if you're deleting and moving something inside of Unreal. So if we go to our filters here, and this is a bit of a tangent, but I'm just going to go over it. And we go to this show redirectors. We'll see that if we go inside level prototyping, there actually is stuff here. So this is the objects that we deleted. So what happened here is the object was stored inside of this folder. And when we moved it, it left a thing called a redirector, which is basically something that just tells Unreal where the new object is. But however, that makes it to where we can't delete this folder because there's stuff inside. So what we need to do is just right click it go to fix up redirectors. That is going to make it to where those objects no longer exist. And then if we go back, we can now delete this folder. So if you're ever getting into a scenario where you can't delete a folder or you can't delete a folder that you've moved or something like that, just fix up redirectors and that's how you solve that issue. The next thing I'm gonna do is do the same thing with character. So we're gonna move that in here. In the character is that's just you know where your skeletons for your default mannequins like the player character in the third person template are so you don't really need them to be you know outside the starter content because they basically are starter content all right and that moved over and so now we're just left with our starter content and with our oops, with our starter content and with our third person uh, character template so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this into blueprints and just hit OK. So again, it does the same thing with the redirectors. So if we just hit fix up redirectors, we can then just delete that folder. Now we have our blueprints here. Now I'm going to go in and the only, I'm going to keep these two and I'm going to move the maps into starter content or into content, not starter content. So now we have a thing for maps and this is where we can put our maps and this is where the default third person template map is. So now if we go inside of our blueprints, we see that we have all these folders and I'm just going to go ahead and delete this one. Okay, so now we have these two things. And so in here, what we have is we have the character blueprint. That is the character we have as our default that most likely you are going to edit the code to and make, you know, into the character that you want for your game. So let's go ahead and keep that. And then we also have this uh, game person, this gameplay mode that is also, you know, the default gameplay mode. So uh, what I like to do is I like to change this, let's change this into player character. And then again, we got to fix up the redirectors. That's just a, a part of, you know, changing anything about your organization system in Unreal is the redirectors. So, in, and then in this input folder, this is just our input. Basically, it's our control unit for the enhanced uh, inputs. And so I'm going to change this. Um, I'm going to just put inputs inside of here. And then we go here. 
And so now we have the actual character of the gameplay mode, and then we have our inputs. And so I'm just going to leave that as here. And so that's going to be the start for our blueprints. Great. And so right now what we have is we have blueprints, maps, and starter content. So maps is obviously where our levels and maps go, starter content where starter contests go, and then blueprint is where everything else goes. So along with player character, you know, you might have other characters. So let's, you know, say NPC. And, you know, NPC, maybe we have, you know, we have enemies. Maybe we have enemies, and then maybe we have, you know, friendly. Right, and then we can have two different, two different folders here. And then we can get even more specific, uh, of course. So we can go in, you know, maybe there's inside enemies, there's, you know, bosses, and or there's like level one enemies, level two enemies, level three enemies. Or there's different types of enemies. So maybe there's melee enemies and there's shooter enemies. But this is the part where you basically got to customize it for wherever your game is. So if your game, you know, has melee and non-melee enemies, you put that there. If it has multiple levels, you can put level one, two, three there. Um, and that's just going to depend. Uh, so inside of Blueprints, we play characters. NPC also like to have, you know, uh, props. So, you know, this can be anything from like, weapons you pick up inside of the game. This can be, you know, levers that open a door. This can be, you know, the door itself. This can be basically anything that is not a character, that is not a character. So any like inanimate object that you can interact with uh, inside here. And again, you can get more specific. You can say level one props, level two props, you know, player props or just environment props or enemy props and all that different things like that. Or you can just, you know, instead of saying props, you can have just weapons, environment props, this, this, and that all inside of here. Again, it really just depends on your project. This is just to give you a starting point. So now we have our blueprints, which all of our blueprint code is going to go, and we have our map to our starter content. We also are going to need a folder for assets. So this is going to be for all of the art in your game. So we go in here, and of course, there's different types of art. So I like to first make a static. mesh folder, and this is, you know, for the static meshes, and then a skeletal mesh folder. Then we have our skeletal mesh folder. This is gonna be, you know, any character models that you have, anything that has a rig, anything that needs to be animated can go inside of here. And then you can also make a folder for materials. And this is gonna be where all your textures go. And then we can also have a folder for, say, if you wanna have for visual effects, we can have the effects folder here. And we can also have an audio folder here for all of our audio. Now, this is just depending on how you want to do it. You could also put, you know, audio or VFX in here, you know, on the outside, instead of having everything in assets, you can leave assets to just mean 3D assets if you want, and you can put audio and stuff here. I personally like to have all of my assets just in the same place so that I can just immediately go here and have everything that I want. And of course, if you have other different kinds of assets, you can put them here too. So if you have, you know, a 2D sprites, you can make a sprites folder and a flipbook folder and stuff like that. Again, this is just for kind of a default uh, third person 3D game. And so in Static Mesh, you're probably going to want to make it more specific. So maybe we want to put, you know, environment. So that's all the meshes that are going to be for our environment. And then maybe we want to make a folder for, say, you know, weapons and for weapons, or you could also, you know, make this a props folder. And then inside of that, we can put, you know, one for weapons. And we can also put one for say armor or something like that. And then, you know, for environment again, we can, you know, if you have different types of environment, maybe we have an indoor environment, we have an outdoor environment, we can put indoor, outdoor, or say we can put level one, level two, level three, you know, stuff like that. You'd also put level one, level two, level three, uh, you know, inside of here if you want. And then you can have, you know, maybe an overall one or maybe one called core that's, you know, your core assets used again. Again, it kind of depends on how you do it. This is personally how I like to do it and how I like to set it up. And then for skeletal mesh, so there's a, so the important thing about this is that the other kind of asset that we're missing is animations. We don't have any animations. So you could put it out here so you can make a new folder just in here that's for animations. I personally like to have it in the skeletal mesh. So what I like to do is say that we have, you know, our player character, right? I like to go in here and I like to have the mesh folder. So that's for the character mesh and also for like the character skeleton. 
Then I'll have a material folder. That is for, you know, the materials of the static mesh. And then we can have an animation folder, which is for the actual animation. We put the mesh here, the materials here, and the animation here. Or again, you can put animation on the outside and not have to worry about that. But personally, I like to do it like this. That way, every single thing you need for one character is in one place. And you're not having to look, you know, across a bunch of different places to find it. But also make sure that you separate out animations. I know it's really easy to just import animation and just have it be right next to your mesh. But in my opinion, that can get really messy and really sloppy. So I think it's good to just separate, out, separate animations into their own folder. Okay, so now we have assets, blueprints, and maps. The last thing I like to have is UI. So this is a folder, you know, just for the UI of your game. And so you can go in here and you can put, you know, all the different types of UI you have. So the main one for, is going, for me is going to be HUD. And we can also have, you know, main menu. And then we can also have one for the pause menu. And then again, we can go into HUD and then you really don't need, you know, three things or two things for it. You need the art. So this can be, you know, the 2D assets that you just put in here and then you need the widgets. And then you can put the widgets in here and then you can use that to separate it. And then I, I personally like to just have them in their own menu. So HUD goes here, main menu goes here and pause menu goes here. Um, of course, you could just have it to where you have just art and widgets in two different ones, but I think it's a little more organized, a little more neat. The other thing is that, you know, main menu and pause menu can share some assets sometimes, or just in general, if in this system, you know, some assets could be shared between multiple things. And when that happens, I think it's just good to either make a copy of them and put them in two different places, or, you know, to be more optimized, you could just put it in, in whatever place feels the most relevant. Uh, and then, you know, if you have teammates, maybe communicate, that's where it is. And then last thing I'm going to show you, which you might have noticed in my previous videos, I like to color coordinate my content browser. You don't have to do that, but personally, I like to do that. So if you right click an object and you go to set color, you can set the color of the folder. And personally, you know, it's blueprint. So we're obviously going to make this blue. And you, know, you can make, you know, whatever shade that you want. And then there, and then, you know, maps, I usually like to make black. Starter content, I like to make gray. And again, the colors are of, out of everything are the thing that matter the least. You can literally do whatever, the, whatever you want with colors. Um, this is just like the way that I personally like to do it. And I personally like to can keep, you know, colors consistent between projects, every single project. These are like the same colors that I do, um, but you can feel free to do, you know, whatever you want with these, these don't matter. And if you don't want to color coordinate because, you know, maybe that doesn't help you like I do, I'm a very visual person, uh, then you don't have to do colors. You can just see them as the vanilla folders. Personally, I think this just helps because you open it up and you say, okay, blue's blueprint, I immediately just click that. Uh, and then, you know, these are color coordinated. I immediately know what color is for what, you know, each thing. And that just helps me to stay organized uh, and stay, make it to where it's as fast as possible. Uh, but one important thing to note is if you do this system, see how I have the player character blue here. Make sure that the character player is always blue then. That way just the colors are consistent throughout the project. That way, you know, blue is always player character. That way you always see blue and you say, okay, that's a player character. You know, don't have them be different colors um, throughout the different systems. Okay, that's going to do it for this video. A very quick and simple video. I just wanted to put out a video on how to organize the content browser. If you look at a lot of the YouTube tutorials out there, most of them are, you know, starting a brand new project and they're most mostly focusing on showing, showing you the code, which I understand, you know, that's what you're, you're there for that video. But I just want to make a video that specifically focuses on how to organize things and keep your stuff organized. So that's the thing that's often overlooked and a thing that you kind of have to learn on your own. So I just want to make this video to help uh, people learn how to organize stuff. Uh, keeping yourself organized is very, very important to be a fast worker. And also to, you know, if you know where everything is, you can get to it faster and you can work faster and that can just keep, you know, projects on time. So make sure you keep everything organized. Make sure that if you're working within a team, you make clear how you're going to organize things. That way everyone's on the same page. Make sure that everyone is putting things in the correct places. That way everything is nice and organized and easy to use. So that's going to do it. And 
and I hope you learned a lot about how to organize your content browser in Unreal Engine 5.